Let's look at what the relative purchasing power parity means. Just like the absolute purchasing power parity, um, the relative purchasing power parity connects exchange rates and prices in two different countries. Except it doesn't look at a specific commodity, let's say a Big Mac or a Dell laptop or anything like that. It looks more like at the general overall price level in this country and in some other country. The idea is uh, the relative purchase and power parity shows that relative prices in two countries is what determines the change in the exchange rate over time. So we are now kind of um, looking at how the exchange rates would be changing in the future when we have the information on the price levels in two different countries. Let me explain this topic using the following example. Let's say we have Japan and the prices for everything you typically buy in Japan kind of the overall price level is expected to increase by 10% over the next one year. So if you want to travel to Japan in one year and if you want to be able to buy the same amount of stuff with your dollars that would be exchanged into yen, in other words, to keep your purchasing power unchanged, the dollar should be exchanged into 10% more yen, right? So if everything is 10% more expensive, but each dollar is exchanged into 2% more yen, then you feel like there is no change, no difference to you. So the dollar should rise by 10% against the Japanese yen over the next year. Um, so the expected exchange rate next year, denoted as E, and then in square brackets S1, should be equal to S0, the current or the spot exchange rate, um, expressed as how many yen per one dollar, as always, multiplied by one plus point one. So this little formula increases the exchange rate by 10% in one year. So 10% more yen per one US dollar. That would uh, leave you, you know, indifferent to the 10% higher price in Japan. Now let's add more information to the story. What else will be happening over the next year? Let's say over the next year, the prices in the United States will also increase, but only by 7%. So we expect a 7% inflation in the US. Then Relative to the U.S. price level in one year, prices in Japan will increase by more, by about 3% more, right? Um, and now it changes our conclusion about how the exchange rate should change so that you um, like feel that your purchasing power is unchanged. You can still buy as much stuff with, with your money you bring to Japan. Now, you do not need to, um, you know, hope that the exchange rate will go up by 10%. You would be, um, you know, uh, you'll feel that your purchasing power is unchanged if the exchange rate increases by only 3%. So the expected exchange rate in this case, with the inflation rate of 10% in Japan and 7% in the US, the exchange rate should only increase by 3% so that you feel like um, the higher prices in Japan makes no difference for you. Um, how would we calculate the exchange rate in one year? We would take the current or spot exchange rate, S0, and multiply it by 1 plus 3%. What is 3%? That's the difference between 10% inflation in Japan and 7% inflation in the United States. Uh, let's apply it to a more specific example. Let's say the current spot exchange rate, S0, equals 120 yen per one US dollar. Then 
With the 10% expected inflation in Japan and the 7% expected inflation in the USA, which implies a 3% higher um, prices in Japan than in the United States, the next year's expected spot exchange rate should equal 120 Japanese yen, which is today's spot exchange rate, multiplied by 1 plus the 3% difference in the uh, between the foreign and the domestic inflation rates, which gives 123.6 Japanese yen per $1. So if in one year the exchange rate increases from today's 120 yen per dollar to 123.6 yen per dollar, you wouldn't care about all these you know, price increases in both countries. Your money, your dollars brought into Japan and exchanged into Japanese yen will allow you to buy the same amount of stuff in one year as it can buy you today. In other words, it will keep your purchasing power unchanged. If we expect the inflation rates in the USA and in Japan to um, stay at the same level. So prices in Japan will keep rising by 10% in two years and in three years and so on. And in the United States, the prices will increase by 7% year after year after year. Then we can calculate the expected spot exchange rate uh, two years in the future, three years in the future, and so on by adding the power two or three to the term 1 plus the 3% difference in the inflation rates. So the expected spot exchange rate in two years, denoted as E in square brackets S subscript 2, would equal S0, which was 120 yen per dollar in our example, multiplied by squared 1 plus 0.03, which gives 127.3 yen per one US dollar and so on. In general, um, the relative purchasing power parity formula says to calculate the expected spot exchange rate at any point of time t in the future. So t could be one if it's in one year. It could be two. It could be three. Two years in the future. Three years in the future. Um, it would equal spot exchange rate S0, which is the amount of foreign currency per one US dollar, multiplied by, open parenthesis, one plus the difference between the foreign inflation rate and the US inflation rate. Um, close parenthesis, power T. Uh, the notations we use for the two inflation rates are lowercase h. So H subscript FC stands for annual inflation rate in the foreign country. H subscript USA stands for annual inflation rate in the United States. Let's do an example. Suppose the Canadian spot exchange rate today is 1.18 Canadian dollars per US dollar. The US inflation is expected to be 3% per year, and the Canadian inflation is expected to be 2% per year. The question is, do you expect the US dollar to appreciate or depreciate relative to the Canadian dollar? To answer this kind of conceptual question, we need to do some calculations first. Let's calculate the expected exchange rate or spot exchange rate uh, between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar in one year. Um, what do we do for that? Well, we use the relative purchasing power parity formula, which says take today's exchange rate, 1.18 Canadian dollars per one US dollar, and multiply it by, you open the parentheses, you put one plus, and then you add the difference between the Canadian and the US inflation rates, which is 0.02 minus 
So it basically gives a negative number, negative 1% uh, difference in inflation rates. The answer you get is 1.17 Canadian dollars per US dollar. So the number will drop, right? The number is expected to drop. If the amount of Canadian dollars per US dollar is expected to drop, who would benefit from that? Canadians or Americans? Well, um, each dollar will buy us fewer Canadian dollars, right? Each US dollar will buy us fewer Canadian dollars. So that's a bad thing for the US dollar. And so we say that we expect the US dollar to depreciate relative to the Canadian dollar. And the other way around for the Canadian dollar, the Canadian dollar is expected to appreciate or get stronger against the US dollar. Because let's say Canadians traveling to the United States would be exchanging fewer Canadian dollars to get each US dollar, which is a good thing for them, but a bad thing for the US. By the way, a problem like this could actually be solved in the financial calculator. Let me bring it up. Let's turn it on. So what is going on in this formula? We have 1.18 today's exchange rate. We multiply it by, and in the parentheses we have 1 plus the difference in inflation rates. So it, it uh, may look very similar to the formula uh, to calculate the future value of some today's amount. The today's amount is today's exchange rate, 1.18. So let's save it as PV. 1.18, let's make it negative, and then press the PV button, which stands for present value. We, we are calculating the exchange rate in one year. So that's our number of years, or N, in the calculator. 1N. We want to calculate the future exchange rate after one year. So we are going to be computing FV, computing the future value. And one more thing that we need to enter in the calculator is the IY, the interest rate. Here, the equivalent of the interest rate is the difference between the foreign and the domestic inflation rates. Foreign minus domestic. Canadian inflation minus US inflation. So 2% minus 3% is negative 1%. And so in the calculator, I put 1 plus minus to make it negative, and I save it as IY. And then I want to compute the future value. Compute FV, 1.17, just like uh, the number I found on my slide. So the equivalent of the IY to compute the future value is the foreign inflation minus the domestic inflation.